we have ignition. Slay with the devil, die with the devil. What's up, everyone? How you doing? Welcome to Motorcycle Madhouse. How you guys doing? It's morning mayhem, baby. I want to welcome 2D Throttle Club, Jason Poofahal. Man, I probably butchered that one, Jason. William Crimson and Ralph Branham. Remember, new members, get your butts over to the community tab, and you'll see members only post. There, it will tell you to download an app. That way, you can get into the members only video conferencing we have on the last of the month. That will be the 27th of this month at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Also, today, you might notice if you're over on YouTube and Facebook that we have a new studio uh, angle on me. We're actually uh, gearing up everything with a lot of different video effects for the Hollywood and China Dow show. Going to get a lot more professional on that show, so make sure to check it out on our other channel. And you can also uh, listen to it over on iHeartRadio, Spotify, all the good podcasts, just like you can for uh, this one boy oh boy oh boy did I piss on some Wheaties I guess with that uh, video I did over on our YouTube channel about the dark side of motorcycle clubs baby did I get rained on that one man the emails just flew in baby and they were all over my ass for that one but like I said in the video I was called out for not putting both sides of the story out. Well, 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 I had to uh, rectify that. So I started a series where I'm going to do the good and the bad and the ugly when it comes to the MC scene as well as uh, the biker scene. Because you know what? Let's face it. Independent, you ain't friggin' uh, goody two-shoes either, man. So I wanted to make sure I put that side of the story out, especially because the atmosphere that we're living in right now with this country and how bikers, and we talked about that last night, uh, bikers seem not to have a country anymore because 2020 was the year the media bashed all over bikers crap they even tried to say the hell's angels started the minneapolis riots come on man so you know and my feeling is that they believe that all bikers are tied to that bikers for trump uh, organization and we all know that's not true but the media is pushing this narrative that we are that we're nothing but trouble didn't they say that in Stur with Sturges? Man, and now they're going around. Now, as of today, and I looked it up again, there was only 300 cases of COVID out of 460,000 people. That's the official numbers from South Dakota. But now the media is saying that bikers were the cause of the spread of COVID all over the Midwest. Well, I say, where is your proof to this? Don't throw me one or two articles. Don't do that. No, I want to see the proof. But that is the problem with a lot of people in this country is they don't demand to see proof. Proof of the allegations that are being made. Now, I get my... Uh, Ugh, I get in a tissel, man. When I, because I look at it different than most people. When I, because I do news and I give opinions on news, uh, especially when it comes to biker stuff. So I get pretty heated when I see that type of stuff. You know, a lot of people probably don't. They brush it off, but the more they put it out there, the more it gets embedded in people's minds. And that's one of the arguments I had about the dark side of motorcycle clubs in that video was the more it shows up, the more it's going to get embedded in the minds of the people that elect these morons 
to enact laws and bump up uh, police uh, budgets. People don't understand that. You're fighting a propaganda war on two fronts right now. And this, uh, you know, goes towards MCs. The propaganda war is easy. You got Leo doing it, and now you got the media doing it. At some point, you got to fight back. You know, it's funny. With how bad this country is, everybody knows the U.S. election is up in arms right now. Uh, Personally, I do not know what's going to happen. I'm not going to pretend to know what's going to happen. I think it's going to go down in a dogfight. And the courts are going to ultimately decide it, if not them, then the state legislatures. Because coming from Chicago, I know the rope-a-dope. I know what they do. That's why they keep power in Chicago. Nobody holds them accountable for their corruptions. Jesus Christ, we have a state speaker right now that ComEd has tied to uh, kickbacks and still nothing happens to them. And then everybody wonders why we don't trust the FBI when it comes to clubs because they have two sets of Ways of, uh, how can I say it, pushing justice and holding people accountable. So yeah, a lot of people uh, don't trust them. Don't trust law enforcement because of that fact. If you have money, you got power, then I guess it really don't matter now, does it to you? Well, it does to us folks. In America, uh, justice is supposed to be blind. You're not supposed to be using it against, you know, applying it differently to everybody you know that's rich or poor whatever it is so yeah a lot of people uh don't know what's going to happen now it comes out that these machines must have flipped votes and if you know it's funny i was talking about that at the when it all started going if you watch that uh, movie with Robin Williams when he was a uh, tv comedy thing and he ran for office and stuff well there was an issue there where anybody who, you know, punched a particular candidate, the vote went for somebody else. Uh, now for the Trump haters. For those who say there's no proof, you're stupid. You don't have your eyes open or you're just ignorant. And I hate to say that, but you're ignorant. There is a lot of proof out there. You don't shut down counting in the middle of the night and start pulling uh, trucks up with ballots. Just saying, man. But that's the state of uh, this country right now. And I really think that the way it is, you got to start fighting back. You really do. I spent all morning today looking at some of the Twitter feeds and stuff. And boy, did I hate that. I'm on Parlor, by the way. You to go over there and check that out. Uh, the Twitter account specifically for feeds of news stories coming off of HarleyLiberty.com. And I seen where this Antifa and other groups were beating up on Trump supporters and the media is not reporting on it. And then you have all these conservatives out there saying, well, the media ain't doing this. Well, look at what's going on. Start fighting back then. Start. Stop crying about it. Start knocking the hell out of these people. I don't care if they're black, white, Hispanic, whatever. But if somebody gets in your face and starts punching on you, don't sit there and take it. Screw that. Start hitting. But that's why bikers are different. That's why bikers don't like, or the media don't like bikers, is because we do fight back. If somebody comes up to a biker and tries some crap like that, they're going to get laid the hell out. Laid the hell out. So, you know, time to fight back. Stop crying and whining. And I think the video yesterday leading into this one story that I'm going to be doing out of Australia, the non-consorting laws. Do you really want that to come to the United States? Because it seems like American police, all they do is take pages out of the playbook of these other countries when it comes to bikers. They started it in Sturges, by the way, and and that's probably went under the uh, 
table on a lot of people, but in Sturges, they even went after businesses' liquor license if he allowed club members to stay in their hotels or motels. Yeah, they were going after businesses. Sad state of affairs, man. Sad state of affairs. And if that can keep on freaking happening, man, it's nobody's fault but our own. But let's go to caller times right now. Let's get into some biker news. Banditos Biker Ba Dumas brought legs topless bar big lady controversy to Corpus Christi. Ashley Burns. Ashley Burns. Uh, Bob Dumas was no stranger to controversy. In some ways, he thrived on it. Dumas, the multi-million dollar uh, Banditos biker who ran a string of South Texas taverns, including the controversial topless bar Legs in Corpus Christi, died November 7th. Our thoughts go out to the Banditos uh, Motorcycle Club on that, as well as his family and friends. He was 86. Rock on. Lived a good life. Dumas was born in Hillsboro and moved to Corpus Crispy, uh, Christi, I call it Crispy, when he was discharged from the Army in 1958. He used the last of his money to open a bar in Corpus Christi, the Plamore Club. It would be the first of several taverns and establishments he owned in Corpus Christi. Uh, hold on a second. I gotta freaking answer that. My bad, man. My bad. You know, I gotta remember to turn this damn freaking phone off. And everybody wonders why I don't like phones. Uh, anyway... It would be the first of several taverns and establishments he'd own in Corpus uh, Christi. In September 1966, Dumas opened an Action Billard Supply Company. Yes. Uh, the only billboard supply company south of San Antonio. Let's see here. I'm over here turning down the damn phone. I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh... In September 1966, we were talking about that, opened uh, Action Billard Supply Company, the only billboard company in uh, San An Antonio or Houston at the time. In 1972, Dumas bought the Auto Club, changing the name the Red Vest Club, then Thirsties, then later Silver Dollar. Dude, he had some business sense. Uh, Dumas also owned legs and topless bar towered over... By a 22-foot-tall cutout of a bikini-clad woman. <laughs> Rock on. Uh, that sign, referred to as the Big Lady, was the center of controversy for more than a decade, beginning in 83. In 1992, the office of Mayor Mary Rhodes was swamped with calls from residents protesting the Big Lady, but the city was powerless. The sign was taken down in 95, but not due to complaints. Vandal splattered the sign with black paint, but she was back within a week. And to some residents, the saying, more racy and vibrant than ever. You gotta love that, man. An article from the time described Dumas as beaming like a proud father as the new sign went up. Dumas sold the club three years later, signifying the end of his 29 years in the topless bar business in Corpus Christi. Dumas was the first millionaire of the Banditos Motorcycle Club. He joined in 1971, and his obituary describes his involvement with the club as the most important relationship of his life, and one that lasted until the day he died. To the Banditos, Dumas was Papa Bear, dispensing jobs and financial advice to law enforcement. He was the godfather of one of the four most prominent and feared outlaw motorcycle clubs in the country, according to a 1982 Collar Times article. Mm, rock on. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dumas was believed to be an honorary national president of uh, the Banditos, though he claimed he had no rank in the club. If you're over on YouTube or Facebook, you just see uh, the lady, man. You gotta love it. <laughs> Uh, well, let's go over to kcbd.com. 
One injured after shooting between uh, motorcycle gangs at 50th South Caboose. Lubbock uh, police responded to a call at 50th uh, Street uh, Caboose uh, from multiple reporting parties in reference to shots fired around 10.15 p.m. Uh, Thursday, this past Thursday night, officers arrived and learned that this was a fight between motorcycle gangs. It was determined to a uh, dispute between the banditos and kinfolk developed inside the bar area. The argument escalated, and several people from both gangs pulled the guns. Shots were exchanged inside the bar before all subjects fled the scene. As officers were processing the scene and interviewing witnesses, the victim arrived at Covenant by private vehicle with non-life-threatening injuries. That, uh, again, banditos and the kinfolk uh, pulling guns like it's the Wild West. Uh, let's see here, man. You gotta love them Canadians, man. Now, this past Friday the 13th, they were urged not to descend on Port Denver or Dover, Ontario, but they did anyway. They don't like us bikers, baby. Not even in Canada. <laughs> Colin Perkle. The frequent roar of motorcycles drowned out warnings from politicians who had called on bikers to sit out their traditional Friday the 13th pilgrimage to this otherwise sleepy Lake Erie town because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The normal crowds, however, which number in the tens of thousands and take over the town, were sharply diminished. Those who did brave the chilly, partially overcast conditions to make the trek many wear masks said they would respect social distancing and other anti-pandemic measures. And right now, Illinois is actually leading uh, the state in uh, COVID-19 rising. It does look like the second wave is here. Sad state of affairs, man. You guys be careful out there. Like I said in another episode, uh, my son was talking about how in the beginning of the 1900s, they were talking about by this time we'd have flying cars and stuff. And he says, how the hell are we going to have flying cars if people can't even wash their damn hands? You know, he's got a point there, man. People need to wash their hands, uh, wear your mask. I know it sucks, but, you know, I know it's... Uh, a lot of people say it's against personal freedom and stuff, which they're probably right, but you got to stop the spread, man. I just had a buddy uh, from high school just died of it, man. No underlying conditions, none of that stuff. He, you know, passed away. Sad state of affairs, but you got to take care of yourself. Well, times are changing, man, so we're limiting the amount of people in there, said James McLeod as he played traffic cop outside a popular store. Usually we would just have people flowing through. Mark Scott, who rode from uh, Woodstock, Ontario, said he only missed two runs in the past 15 years. Like others, he noted the absence of street vendors, entertainment, and the drastically reduced number of bikes. It's really quiet. It's not as many bikes as would normally be here. Even on a cold day. Overall, the scene was low-key, peaceful bustle with people sipping on coffee, munching on fast food, or standing in line for a t-shirt. Riders, as usual, cruised the main street, the time intermingled with cars. A recent rally in South Dakota. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. I told you this. One of the largest in the world was blamed for a sharp increase in COVID cases both in the state and elsewhere. Now it's reached up to Canada. Authorities were hoping to avert a similar problem. There was none. They have no proof. Crystal Chop, mayor of Norfolk County, where Port Denver is located, said... The rally is important to community. At the same time, Chop said she worried a large gathering could lead to a case spike and further restrictions. They're already talking about shutting us down here in Illinois. Uh, let's go over to the Columbus Dispatch. Man killed in shooting at Torres Motorcycle Club identified. And we actually talked about this when it uh, happened, but they now have identified him. Uh, 
and this was at the Taurus Motorcycle Club in South Linden on November 7th. According to a police report, 28-year-old Demetrius Alexander of the South Side was pronounced dead around 3.45 uh, a.m. Sad state of affairs. Officers had been called to the Torres Motorcycle Club located at 1135 Cleveland Avenue on a report of a shooting. Initial reports indicated there were about 200 rounds fired. Holy crap, I'm talking Mac 9 or Tech 9 or something like that going AK-47, something going on there, 200 rounds fired, those weren't handguns. Alexander was found fatally wounded and two other men, 33-year-old Wayne Coffin of the northeast side and 29-year-old Dorian Martin of the east side were wounded. Both Kaufman and Martin were taken to area hospitals for treatment of their injuries. The motorcycle club was also the site of a drive-by shooting on the 23rd of uh, June in 2019 that injured five people. Man. Uh, Alexander's homicide remains unsolved. Oh, this is what I was talking about, about uh, the cops over here in the United States are going to start taking uh, the lead from Australia and stuff. Police issue consorting warnings at OMCG gathering. Police from the organized crime gangs group issued consorting warnings after attending a gathering of Banditos OMCG members uh, at their uh, gathering. Probably a run or something. Special investigators from the OCGG commence operation Sierra Reflex after identifying a planned Banditos members, meaning detectives from the OCGG, including Task Force Maxima and Regional Police, attended it over the weekend, conducting consorting action, traffic enforcement, and intelligence gathering. Five people, including the alleged uh, president of the Banditos OMCG, were issued with notices to appear on six charges, including disqualified driving, uh, drinking uh, and driving, possess dro dangerous drug methamphetamines, possess property suspected of being stolen, failed to provide specimen of br uh, breath from drug analysts, and po possess prohibited item. Four consorting warnings were issued, 16 street checks of OMCG members conducted, and five traffic infringement notices issued. Detective Inspector Tim Ledbetter, Tex Force Maxima, said the highly visible police presence played in an important role in the meeting being significantly disrupted with only about 20 people attending. Operation Sierra Reflex uh, involved an effective uh, police operation with intelligence specialists conducting significant background work to identify the event, time, and location. There is no doubt that this meeting of senior members was eventually uh, called off due to strong police presence. And they go on to say that uh, they're going to keep on disrupting them. So... My final thoughts when we get back. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Hi, this is China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. Okay, you know, my question is to the clubs out there, why, you know what would really throw them cops off of you? Don't wear your patches. Don't identify. That's what I would say, and then you know what? Their intelligence gathering is going to go into a stereo because they don't know what the hell's going on, and that's one thing that could combat something like that. Now I know it sucks that hey, we're club members, we're supposed to wear patches. Well, you know, if they want to play dirty, clubs can play uh, play dirty as well. Just don't wear the patches. Tell them to go screw them freaking selves, and then let's see how much fun they really have. But that's what worries me in the United States. Even though I'm not a patch holder, I'm not in a club, none of that type of stuff. 
you still have to look at what happened in South Dakota, I think it was a year or so ago, where they actually went up to businesses and threatened to take away their livelihood if they allowed clubs in. Now, that's not on the scale of consorting laws, which I'd have to argue there's somewhat of that here in the United States, and people are going to say, well, what are you talking about? When somebody gets released from jail or something, they are told they cannot hang around any members of said particular club. Well, that could be called in a consorting type of deal. You're not allowed to go around people because you're under indictment or you're going through the, the, all the BS with the court and they say, hey, you can't you know, associate with that person. Which I don't understand why there's no lawyer that hasn't freaking pressed back against that because I thought we had a First Amendment right to associate with who we wanted to when we wanted to. It doesn't say, well, if you're in court or you're under arrest or you got a case pending that you still can't associate. It doesn't say that. So I'm real surprised that it hasn't been pushed back against. I, I really am. But that's just one example of what's going on in this country right now. Instead of the cops and all them law enforcement agencies focusing on what the real problem is, and I'd have to freaking contend terrorism, because it was funny, a couple of years in Daytona, I think it was the Felucia County, uh, one of their uh, detectives or lieutenants, they actually came out and said clubs that are one percenters are domestic terrorists. Now, how the hell can you come out and say something like that for bikers, but not come out and say that against, say, Antifa or these other communist freaks that I call them? Again, they're not applying their opinions down the middle straight up. If you're going to call one this, you might as well call the other that because you got enough proof on the other that they truly are. But that's not how it's done. See, bikers, they got the rebel spirit. They really do. Let me fix this here. There we go. Today's show, man, going nuts today, man. First you got the phone going, then you got the mic problems. I got a lot of gremlins going on here right now, but they will be fixed. Uh... But you got actual incidences of domestic terrorism going on, but you don't do nothing about it. You got to apply the law, you know, equally if you ask me. And that stuff, and now it's reached Canada where the Sturges Motorcycle Rally, uh-oh, it was the super spreader event. 300 people, man. 300 people. They haven't gave any instances of any other numbers but now they're saying it's a super spreader event that it's taken all over the midwest i'm sorry man i really am but you know i'm skeptical i really am because it, it gets enough where and that's why people go to third party creators now is because they want to hear honest opinion they don't want to hear just one side or the other they want to hear it down the middle. They want to hear news that actually matters. And they don't want any people trying to push their point of view on them. But that one upsets me, man. The Sturgis thing. What is, does it upset you guys? It's like, again, 2020 has been the year of piss on bikers. Even though, and this is what I don't understand. This is what I don't understand about cops. And I've said it time and time again. It's been a lot of damn bikers standing in your corner against these Antifa pricks. Against these riders. So what the hell is with you people? Just goes to show you there is no loyalty among blue. Except if you are blue. Because there's been a lot of bikers and hey, you know, I have my personal opinions on that type of stuff. That have been supporting you guys. And you just piss on everybody, man. That ain't cool. So you only have loyalty to each other. The blue walls there like it's always been. 
And the only reason a lot of your guys, like on the wall of shame, are being taken down is because too much technology now. It's hard to hide that shit. Not to mention, you have a whole... Di it, just like the biker community, you have a whole different new way of thinking with these younger ones. So it, it is with the cops as well, man. So, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but again, I would like to welcome Jason. Uh, I'm just going to call you Jason P. Because if I say uh, Fuma Hall, you know, hopefully I pronounced it right, Jason. William Crimson and Ralph Branham. Uh, 2D Throttle Club. If you want to become a member of the Throttle Club, you can. Just go on to YouTube, hit join. Uh, the Rumble in the Woods next July is a members only event. Uh, I'll be pushing uh, more information as it comes around, but yes, that is a members only event if you want to come. We're going to do a lot of riding, baby, a lot of outdoor camping, old school way. It's going to be a fun freaking time. Don't forget to go over to Hollywood and China Dow show. Oh, we've been having fun over there. Check out the new setup that we're using for that show. Uh, with that, I'll talk to you guys later. Make sure you be good and get some titties.